Yeah, buddy. I know it's very important. What is up? What is up? I'm trying. I'm. I'm looking. I'm doing this Streamyard piece. Bless up, Streamyard. Yes. Oh, sort some things out here. Oh, look! I could look at this thing. I could do here. Jump! Look at this. Well, 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 that was freaking cool. <laughs> they have a they have a countdown on this thing. It is so fresh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, this is Paul checking in with a story. And listen, this video, this live stream is gonna be if you find that you're you are going through or you've experienced a difficult time, a challenging time, I think this video is gonna res is gonna resonate with you. If you've been through a challenging time, you've overcome it. And if you are going through a challenging time, this will be a good video to rock. So check this out, right? So thank you, thank you, thank you also for those that are on Facebook that are watch that watch this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the congrats on the book. Very appreciative of all the words. I will be following up with replies and comments soon. Very soon. Coming, coming soon. Maybe tonight. The videos I'm putting up, I'm, I, I asked you all some questions, I guess it was a month ago, about some topics you wanted to cover because I've been doing this uh, this public speaking class and learning a lot more about, about really engaging with an audience and sharing my story. So in the, I, I've been practicing and I'm realizing I'm, I'm saying some filler words, but I'll get to all that stuff later. And this is me doing, I have an opportunity to practice some things. And I want to share, haha, <laughs> Dana, what up, Dana Dane. So I want to share this story that, that really resonated with me. And I think it's going to, I think it, it was important for me to share this, especially as as I put out before, I'm going to be doing or I'm doing this step into the arena program for men. And it's for men that are going through a lot of challenges in life and are in transition. So this story that um, I want, I'll set this up. So at the time of this whole situation or time of this, the day that it almost ended, I had just gotten paid from this consulting gig I was doing. I was all happy. I was like, yeah, I was, I was amped. And it was right on time, too, because I was behind in bills. My car was about to get repossessed. I was behind in child supports. It was a real rough, rough time. So I get paid. I'm all ecstatic. Morning time, I go to pay my, uh, my electric bill. They said the car is rejected. I'm like, what? Just put money in there. Come to find out because I was in arrears. You uh, The court... Trap, took the money. So I was broke, stressing all day, nighttime. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was in such a mood. Like I couldn't, it was tough for me to stay home. So I go out, go to a bar, have a drink, driving home, get pulled over by the cops. My license is suspended. Parking ticket, I completely ignored for months. Now everything seems like it's coming down on me, coming down on me on the midst. Also, I'm in the midst of the divorce. I have I have a, another child out of wedlock that's in a whole other state. I'm going back and forth. It's a, my mentally, I was in a space. So after I got pulled over, the cops gave me a break. Cops let me park the car and they were like, just walk home. You're not far. Cool. Each step that I was taking as I was walking home, it was like, it was like I was stepping in sludge, stepping in sludge. And it was like every pound of the pavement, it was like this vibration of like, you're a piece of shit. Look what happened. You did this, 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 you did this. Oh, did I tell you about this time when you did this, you did this, you did this? I'm like, oh. It's heavy, heavy. So I'm walking, all right, I'm, I'm walking home and there's a bridge over a highway. 
I'm walking at the bridge, and it's at that time when it was. It seemed like it was at the heaviest point, and at the most, that final nail in the coffin. I just grabbed onto the fence, and I closed my eyes, and I just envisioned myself jumping off the over the fence onto the highway and ending it all. I can remember. I can feel like as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh my god! I can feel the rust of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> I could close my eyes and I could hear the cars whizzing by thinking what this whole process would be like. Like thinking I could just be done with this. What? Why am I even here? Every time I give my best, I'm in this victim mentality. And I, listen, far, this is where I was at the time. And you'll understand why after I go later on and tell you these tips. And in that moment, I could, that was the only way I could see to get out of it all. Now, looking back, there was some sort of voice that was there that was like, hold on, Paul. Hold on, buddy. There's a lot of work to be done, my guy. Don't do this yet. And wherever that voice came from, I was like, that voice was like, listen, let's go. Just go sleep on it. Go sleep on it. There's another time, but right now, let's just go sleep. Now. I listened to the voice, went home, slept. From that night when it was so close to, I was just, I thought there was nowhere else to go. Nothing else to do. I've done it all. If this relates to you, like it resonates for you, like great. If not, listen, people are experiencing this. So um, I sleep, I wake up. From that next day, my learning curve for life shifted, the trajectory adjusted dramatically. Now, the things I'm going to share with you right now, are three of the tips that uh, I'm going to call them more lessons, things that looking back on that situation, I can understand where I was and the reason I got there. So I'm going to share these three things with you. I, I, I Look, this thing even has banners. Check this out. Look, the first thing, the first lesson is take off your blinders. Okay. Looking back at the situation and the work that I've done over that time period, like work on self-development with my with my like therapist, energy work, Alona, like men's work, personal development, all these things have taught me and, and shown me that, oh, these are the things that have helped me get to here from there. Okay. The first big one was to take off my blinders. Now, I say this because when I was thinking back on this time, and I remember working with my brother, Wayne, he was like, we were talking about, like, I was at a juice business a while ago. And we were talking about, he was like, Paul, you're undervaluing yourself. And like, what I really heard him say was like, Paul, you're not, oh, he was undervaluing. I said, he actually, he said, I'm undervaluing, you're, you're undervaluing your services. And I was like, oh, junk. And then he actually later did say, you're undervaluing yourself. So I recognized that my value was like me putting on these blinders, like this is all I'm worth because these things are happening with child support, job, money, all this, which had me on my blinders like this is who I am. I'm these failures. Me taking off the blinders now gets me to see like, yo, th th listen, this is a situation. <laughs> this is going to this is going to enhance, get better. It's OK. Right. So. When I started to realize that, and then also started to look at things like, okay, I had these blinders on as far as my stories, my beliefs, my my perception of things. I started to open things up, and by me opening or taking off the blinders, it was really more about me starting to look at things objectively. Okay, so starting to really look at like, well, hold up, like, all right, well, yeah, you did this, I'm like, okay, cool, and you've done this, you've done this. It's really getting to uh see everything rather than see a specific thing because that's where my um, emotion is. Or that's where my energy is. or That's where my perception is. Okay. So taking off your blinders is a key thing. And it also helped me understand that I really was undervaluing myself. That's a tough one to recognize. And I think for a lot of situations that is happening for sure. Either way, take off the blinders. That's the first one. Really take a leg of, take a really open look at your situation see what's going on, and also really see what are the stories that are keeping you in your situation, okay? 
Number two, acknowledge yourself in your situations. All right, so now that you've taken off your blinders, you're seeing the whole picture, you're seeing everything, right? Now's the time to truly acknowledge yourself and your situations. The acknowledgement is good and bad. I'm going to explain why. What I recognize is like when I only, when I was working towards acknowledging the good, which also required practice and work. I started to recognize like, oh, man, this is um, it's really difficult for me to acknowledge like good things about myself. Now, here's the other thing. Like I noticed that it was easy for me to use the bad things about myself to beat up myself. Okay, I say that because when I started to recognize it's time for me to acknowledge those bad things or those perceived bad things. And it helped me understand like, okay. It's acknowledging that's what it is. <laughs> it's me taking the emotion out of this thing that I perceive as bad and being able to see this as a thing. Okay, this is what happened. It's very like cause and effect type of mentality and thinking. The reason why I think acknowledging yourself is one and your situations is it helped me looking back on it. I recognize now that when I failed to really look at my situations, which had me, you remember we said my license was suspended, right? That ticket was coming in the mail. Even that second one where it went to court and you got to rip the sides and stuff. And then it's like, oh, oh, okay, now I owe now I owe $45 instead of 15 So that thing was coming in the mail. I failed to acknowledge it. What happened? My license was suspended, which compounded onto what I was experiencing in that moment. So acknowledging your situations, me addressing like, yeah, I got a ticket. I messed this up. Not even messed this up, but yes, I have a ticket. I'm going to pay this. Cool. You acknowledge your situation, you acknowledge yourself. Hey, hey, not, let's acknowledge that you have the, about the ability to pay for it. Yeah. So I want you to think of acknowledging the wins as really acknowledging or not say acknowledging yourself and your situations is really acknowledging the small wins. Okay. Big thing because it may not seem like much and it means a lot. The third thing is a collection of things. Okay. The third thing, bless up yourself. Okay. I, I like, I, you know, I, I wrote, I wrote about acknowledging and blessing. And then I started to recognize, like, okay, yeah, that's that's cool and everything, but like, what's what is what is this energy that I want to bring to myself? So I started acknowledging myself. I'd be like, man, there's in Jamaican cultures, like, big up yourself, like, you know, talk yourself up, but like, honor yourself. And while this, I was like, yo, bless up. And I hear that in the Jamaican culture too. So every time I come with that energy, it's really started when I was learning to acknowledge myself in those small wins. So it helped me to understand, like, wow, man, like, oh, man, you know what? Yeah, I really didn't feel like going to a 5 a.m. class today. But shoot, as I'm in my car driving there, I'm blessing up myself. I'm like, yo, bless up for getting out of that freaking warm ass bed and getting outside and cold. But, yo, it's little wins that help to contribute and make things and put things in a different place. So listen, as, as I say this, the key thing that helped that, as I look over these, these guys and these tips, what this all helped me recognize is that I was undervaluing myself and it helped me transmute that to recognize what is the value of myself and in myself. Okay, that's a key thing because listen, for especially in my thing for stepping to the arena is for men. Men go through a lot of transition, especially like whether it's divorce, it's your job, and it challenges who, for me, when I was in that experience, it challenged who I was. I had to relearn and rewire myself in a way that activated parts of myself I I had yet to realize I even had. So I say this to you and I say this as you're hearing this. I hope these lessons uh, helped you out. If not, hey, listen, thanks for watching and supporting. If you're into public speaking, I do appreciate feedback. Yes. And listen, I'm going to finish off with... uh, a really, a really important quote when I'm thinking about this situation and, and really uh, managing the tough times and getting through then move, getting through the tough times and then thriving. And that requires some rewiring and it's 
yeah, it's rough. Listen, I'm thinking as I go back and I think about that night, that day, this the ups and downs and like the low of really in my mind thinking like I'm gonna I'm gonna jump, and then like climbing the fence like, holy shit, I'm about to do this and like calculating how can I get over this fence, like what? So I get it and I think. A lot of men are there because, look, men are four times more likely to kill themselves. That's a steady statistic for years now. Okay? So, like, listen, rather than do that, sleep on it one more day and then shift the trajectory. Hopefully this helps. This is on. This is going to be on YouTube, so I'll share the video. But, like, yeah, come back through, man. If you're watching the replay, you can put the replay hashtag thing in there. That would be great, too. And I appreciate, appreciate you all. Appreciate the feedback. Oh, the quote, too, that I want to wrap up with. <laughs> My Everybody's girl, Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. You are all meant to shine as children do. We lit, we are, we were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. So as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Bless up. Peace, everybody.